Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you another Goosebumps talk type of video. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing a pretty touchy subject, and we're going to be discussing controversial Goosebumps stories. Now, the reason why I've been wanting to make this talk type of video and do this subject is because Goosebumps is 30 years old. And when I think of Goosebumps, I always think about Goosebumps pushing the envelope and really create, helping create a platform for kids to have uh, horror made for them. And I find that very important in the history of Goosebumps. And um, I think Goosebumps and controversy are commonly linked, especially if you grew up in the 90s, you grew up hearing about the, um, the stuff going on in the news about the series. There was people trying to burn the books. You know, that stuff goes way back. I'm not going to be discussing that in this video. There's plenty of articles you could probably find on the internet dealing with that subject if you care to know. But in today's video, I put aside some stories. They're not all full books. One is a short story, and the rest are full books. But I pulled aside some stories from Goosebumps that I consider to be the most controversial, at least in, in the frame that... I saw, I see it going on in the community in, in terms of discussions, uh, opinions and stuff. These uh, ones I see talked about the most. I got, in no particular order, I'm trying to emphasize this, I'm not putting any personal opinion into this video. I just made a pile and I'm going to go with that. Um, I want to stay unbiased in this. I just want to talk about the controversy itself and not try to side with a particular controversy um, or be okay with it. I, I, I don't want to put that out there because that, that will take away from what I'm trying to talk about in the video. But if you feel a certain way about certain things, um, about the controversies I'm going to be bringing up, uh, I encourage everyone to express their comments down in the comment section what you think to be controversial in this series. Maybe I left out a book. Maybe I left out a certain um, broad topic that could be considered controversial in Goosebumps. Or maybe you just want to chime in thoughts on certain books I'm going to be bringing up. Feel free to do so. But I only ask that everybody keep it, you know, copacetic and friendly in the comment section. And don't be disrespectful. Okay? As long as we're all on the same page, we can have fun and talk about this. So, a little bit of ground rules before we go any further. Uh, first thing I want to say, I'm not trying to alienate anybody who might be fans of certain stories I'll be bringing up. That's not my goal. I'm not trying to alienate anybody. If you like these, that's fine. I like a few of myself. I even love a few. Um, but, like I said, I'm trying to keep it unbiased and just talk about the controversy behind them and why they're so controversial in the community. Um, so I'm not trying to alienate anybody if you like these. Second thing... I'm also not trying to chime in my own opinions. I want to put that out there again. Not trying to chime in my own opinions. It's just strictly the controversy. Third thing I want to uh, bring up is that if some of these things might be kind of, I don't know, uh, touchy. So if you're like more akin to um, sensitivity on a few subjects... Uh, you might not want to watch this video. Um, is, and if you've never read Goosebumps or watched Goosebumps, please, 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 please. Do not take what I'm saying in this video to be a representative of all books. Um, what I'm saying here is that these stories in particular, which are a very select handful that I brought for discussion, uh, have the most controversy behind them, at least in my opinion. And I kind of want to go over some broad topics that I will... that. A lot of books kind of share um, that Goosebumps has that could be considered controversial and maybe go over some controversial ones with specific scenes uh, before I get into my picks. So, broad topics that are controversial in Goosebumps, um, there's a couple, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people will expect to see books with, like, animal violence and abuse. There is some of that animal gore, um, deaths and stuff that happens in Goosebumps. Um, it happens in quite a few, few of the books. So, really, I know how controversial that could be, <laughs> uh, 
but I, I didn't want to pick every single book that has that. You know what I mean? A famous example would be the first Night of the Living Dummy book when Mr. Witch strangles a dog, right? And there's a couple other books like Werewolf of Fever Swamp where obviously there's some animals that get murdered out in the swamp by this werewolf and it's pretty grisly in the imagery on that. So that stuff is in Goosebumps, right? And then you have another thing where you see uh, toxic and slightly abusive families where you have negligent parents, you have extreme uh, hazing and bullying from siblings, um, just overall evilness from siblings sometimes, uh, bad family dynamics, you know, that stuff exists. Um, and that can be kind of controversial in some books. A couple of books could be like Chicken Chicken with the parents in that book, <laughs> or the parents... Um, you know, think about any book with negligent parents or like uh, How to Kill a Monster when the grandparents just straight up knowingly leave their kids at home with a monster inside the house. You know, stuff like that can be kind of controversial. Um, but that that's in a lot of books, okay? Uh, another thing that could be in a controversy is um, extreme bullying just from peers. That is a prevalent case. A lot of the Goosebumps protagonists are the wimp archetypes. So they get... Some some kids get some brutal hazing and some really mean things done to them, especially in series 2000. Um, so yeah, th that stuff does happen. And then another thing I kind of want to bring up is sometimes that can be considered controversial is bully protagonists. Some Goosebumps books have bullies as the main characters. That might upset people. If you read Go Eat Worms, You Can't Scare Me, Headless Halloween, that might upset you <laughs> because the bullies are the main characters. Could be intriguing and interesting as a good shake-up every once in a while. But stuff like that could be controversial, right? Um, so those are just like broad topics. I know there could be a little bit more. If you want to add to the broad topics, feel free in the comment section. Um, now for specific scenes, I know, I, I think, two books that people will probably expect me to talk about. Uh, the first one is Slappy's Nightmare. Slappy's Nightmare, there's that Slappy infant baby scene. That it, if you read that, it's going to shock you and probably make you feel a certain way. Uh, if you're more akin to being sensitive to what's going on to the child in that scene. So that one particular scene could be considered controversial. Another one could be like The Mummy Walks with the infamous gunfighting scene during a turbulent uh, Middle Eastern uh, war going on. That's intense, a little too intense. Some people might argue that that's a little too far to include in a kid's book. You know, like I said, if if I jump down the rabbit hole too far, I have to include every single book with like one particular scene. So stuff like that, if you want to add books with specific scenes that are controversial that I'm not going to touch on, feel free. But the books I wanted to touch on in this video more or less stem to the entirety of a story in some way or fashion. So, uh, there was like three criteria I was going on with the picks. Uh, the, the true controversial ones are ones that um, that have um, something that could affect the entire story um, early on, or like dealing with like descriptions of characters, or um, certain events that a character dis uh, that involving choices that characters make affect the rest of the book stuff like that um another criteria i was looking at is just the premise itself and what the book is saying throughout the entirety of the story what's the book's theme is it talking about something uncomfortable that could potentially alienate people that can potentially offend people that can potentially you know do that and then the third thing is uh, an event in the in the story that recontextualizes the rest of the book and makes it with innuendos and you know clues and context that affects the entirety of the book when this happens. So, yeah. So those are kind of like the three criteria. The ones that truly are controversial and in your face. So I do have eight books I set aside. I kind of want to talk uh, about some. Now, some of these controversies have been fixed in later reprints like the first one we're going to talk about and a lot of people might not know that this book is controversial but we're going to bring up attack of the jack o -Lanterns. the original printing the original style 62 uh, original 62 book 
is the controversial version. From my understanding, I don't have them on hand, but the 2003 in the classic reprint fixes the issues of controversy that was initially in this version here. Now, to kind of talk about the controversy, uh, I'm going to have to pretty much explicitly say what it is. And, uh, yeah. So, part of the controversy with this book is that there's a character in this book who happens to be an African American. And, um... The description of the character uh, seems to be controversial because it enforces stereotypes and stuff like that. So that's one criticism of controversy people have about the original version. And another thing about it that makes it controversial is it comes to talk about overweight people um, in a negative light, I guess. Um, I guess it's called fat shaming, if you want to call it that. And people take controversy to the comments made about overweight people in this book. So, that's why this book is controversial. But, according to some I've talked to, the descriptions of the African American character was fixed in the reprints and changed to something less stereotypical and more uh, appropriate. And, um, I, for, I'm assuming that the, uh, the you know, the, the comments about the overweight people probably weren't changed because that's a, a hinging part of the story. Um, to kind of, this might get into mild spoiler territory, but essentially these, uh, gr a group of overweight people go missing around Halloween. And when it comes by the end of the story, you realize that these missing overweight people have something to do with certain characters who are may or may not have been eating them because they have more meat on the bone to get my drift so that's what makes this original ver uh, version controversial like i said i think it's less controversial with the with the 2003 and the classic goosebumps reprint but this one i put in the honorable mentions because other than that i don't think it's quite as controversial and brought up as controversial as these other books in the in like the true five i want to talk about so this one's kind of like an honorable mention but i thought i'd bring it up now, this book is controversial for a completely different reason, and we're going to be talking about one. Now, <laughs> I know Attack of the Jack Lanterns is a love book, so is this one um, by some. So, like I said, I'm not trying to alienate anybody, but uh, The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. Uh, this book is controversial for unique reasons. Like, this book is controversial, essentially, from the main character, Sarah Moss. Sarah is a very polarizing protagonist. It's, she, I think she's easily the most polarizing protagonist in the history of Goosebumps. And the reason that is, is because Sarah, she has like this story going for her that she doesn't want to be at Camp Cold Lake. Uh, she has these troubles making friends and she's kind of relatable. But uh, in the halfway point of the book where part... A and Part B are supposed to uh, intersect. Um, there's a choice that Sarah makes that affects the rest of the book. And a lot of people seem to have a breaking point when it comes to this book, when it comes to this scene. So essentially, what Sarah comes to the conclusion of is to pretend to drown herself. And in doing so, she hopes that she will be rescued. And when she's saved and, you know, everybody sees that she's okay, everybody would feel sorry for her and become her friend. So, the, the, the controversy is that people find this to be very unusual and very manipulative. Um, and it's also talking about uh, faking a suicide, which uh, could be damaging to people who have lost family members or friends to suicide and uh, her playing around with that idea is not cool and might be sending a bad message to kids reading the book now to be fair sarah does have something happen to her in the story that's kind of messed up <laughs> as a result but i'm not going to try to commentate on that but uh, what i'm trying to get at is that the controversy is basically by the character's actions and what that character represents with those actions 
And I know that on one side of the argument, this is, this one's heavily debated. People find validation through her character, vindication, whatever you want to call it. And on the other side, people really dislike her <laughs> for that reason. So this is a pretty controversial book for the character and the decision made that affects the rest of the story. So, yeah, had to include that one. And then um, the last, I guess, of the honorable mentions goes to the oldest book on this list, I think. And it's book number 13, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. Now, going back to the, the news line, the news headlines and stuff, this one was criticized back in the day for having murder in the title. It was already controversial as is. Um, but we're talking about the story here. What makes the story controversial? There are, there are not a lot of people I've heard made this argument, but there is a, a couple significant people that I've seen make this argument about this book that I think used to be uh, more... This book used to be, I think, more hated back in the day, and it's kind of seen a reawakening. But there are people still holding on to the controversy this book brings, which is why I'm bringing it up. Is that essentially, if you have not read this book, like I said, we're going to be kind of going into spoiler territory. Um, this character named Jerry uh, moves into this new house and there's a haunted piano. And, he, and there's this like really creepy ghost story atmosphere going on in his house dealing with this um, phantom piano playing. And there might be a, an old woman phantom playing the piano. So when his parents sees that he's you know, take him to piano, they take him to this school run by this guy named Dr. Shriek. And when he goes there, um, he starts practicing piano with the teacher, and the teacher seems to be preoccupied with his hands, which implies kind of like a hand fetish kind of thing, which kind of makes people antsy when they're reading it. But it gets weirder as the story goes on uh, near the end. It's revealed that <laughs> the the ghost phantom is connected to this guy named Mr. Toggle, who essentially murdered his former um, master, you know, uh, for her hands. And after doing so, he was on a mission to find the right pair of hands. So he created this piano school and created Dr. Shriek, who is a robot to find students with perfect hands, which presumably are kids, and essentially cut their hands off mur and murder them. And the motive behind the, uh, behind the villain is the controversy. People find it to be kind of a perverted type of, type of behavior, right? If you're aiming to, you know, if you have a hand fetish and you're trying to kill kids for their body parts, that kind of goes into um, a little too real territory for some. And some people find it to be controversial because it's like child predatory practices, right? Uh, serial killers, you know. It's the character is controversial because it's literally he's literally a serial killer, um, targeting kids. And some people kind of feel that that's too real. You know, it's one thing if a monster goes after kids, but when you have a real human monster going after kids like that, that's a little too real. So that's the controversy, right? Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to speak on whether I agree with it or not. That's just what it is. So, yeah, brought that book up. So now, really, the five most controversial we're going to talk about. Believe it or not, um, this one, uh, we're going to be discussing My Hairiest Adventure. Now, some people might be scratching their heads. Why, why is this book controversial? What about this book is controversial? Uh, well, this book is one of those, the entirety of the premise and the themes are criticized to be off-putting, uncomfortable, unnecessary, and bad taste. Kind of all in one. Um, so the criticisms behind this book essentially is that this book is a one huge allegory for puberty. And people think it's off-putting and it's very forced to read something to this caliber and to this length that this book went to with puberty. Now, puberty is a subject you see throughout Goosebumps. This is not the only story to utilize puberty. Um, a lot of stories kind of borrow that element from this and kind of do it more subtly, you know. 
But here, it's just full blast the entire book. And you know what it's trying to do, and it's kind of awkward, and um, character relationships feel awkward because of it. And that's why people seem to look at this book as a controversial book. Um, sh should Stein have ever made this book about puberty? Um, and, and that's a commonly asked question about this. Is Did this deserve to ever get made? Why was this made? Like, people constantly ask that question. And when you have to question why a book was made by its theme, it's pretty controversial when you're talking about the theme of it, right? Uh, because if people don't resonate with the theme, obviously it rubs them the wrong way. Uh, I'm not saying that people don't like this book. Like I said, I'm not trying to alienate people. Uh, the other side of the coin is people think this is a well-written book. They think it's fun. It's uh, they, they like the character dynamics. They think the twist at the end is great. Um, which this book also kind of deal <laughs> dips its toes into um, animal abuse, kind of, um, in a different context. But it, it's kind of there, too. Some people have made that argument as well. So, yeah, you get a little bit of puberty controversy, a little bit of animal controversy, um, and you get this. I think this one is one of the more infamous ones. It has been reprinted in the 2003 reprints. I highly doubt if anything was changed. Maybe some certain scenes might have. I'm not too familiar with that. Perhaps people down in the comment section might be more fluent on that. But, yeah, this is controver controversial for what I said about puberty and the animal tones to it. So, there you go. Now, this one might shock a, a couple of you, <laughs> uh, or might upset you that I'm putting this on the controversy, but like I said, I'm not trying to alienate anybody who likes this book. This is one of my childhood favorite books, so I'll, I'll say that. Um, but it's not really one of my favorites anymore. We're going to bring up Bride of the Living Dummy. Now, I do have the reprint here for posterity and uh <laughs> i guess um i don't know where a good place to start with this so why this book is controversial is essentially the the story centers around centers around this girl named jillian who um has these two twin siblings who have this doll named mary ellen and one day they go to see this um uh ventriloquist named Jimmy O. James, who's in possession of Slappy, the dummy. And essentially, they come into acquisition of Slappy, and it's kind of implied throughout the story that maybe Slappy, since we're used to Slappy, Slappy's doing all these things, but it's actually Mary Ellen. And there's this big revelation from Mary Ellen that she wants Slappy to be her husband, right? And Slappy's kind of on the back burner, and then we get Slappy finally, and Slappy reveals his intentions. It's not to marry Mary Ellen. It's to marry 12-year-old Jillian. Right? And a lot of people can excuse that and kind of correlate that with Slappy just wants a slave. And, you know, that's, what, that's a shtick. And uh, him marrying Jillian is just a way to make her his slave. Right? But there's things in the original book that kind of give innuendos that there's a... The controversy is, essentially, there's sexual connotations behind this because uh, of use of what, what Stein writes in the book as love taps. I wish I was making that up, but that's in it. And it, it was so profound that the reprint actually took out the love taps, okay? So if it wasn't controversial, why would they take it out in the reprint? It had to be controversial, right? So the love tapping and the innuendos implied with Jillian are there, that maybe there was, according to some, there are some sexual connotations with Slappy. Now, some people immediately shoot that down, and, you know, people tend to argue about this one a lot. That's why I included it. I'm not trying to get people to argue down in the comment section, but that's just what the argument is. And it's kind of um, also added to the uh, ending where people take offense that Jillian, essentially, like, we're getting into spoiler territory, in the book at least, Jillian is possessed and invaded by Slappy. Well, Slappy's spirit, because he, you know, his body gets destroyed in a wood chipper. But Slappy invades her body and takes over her. And that's how the book ends. So, really, there's another connotation to be with that. Uh, 
another innuendo if you want to call it that. And people really think that on on the on the argument side that this is one of the most controversial slappies that they've ever done in Goosebumps. And some people have even gone out of the way to say that this is the worst slappy ever. Um, I'm not here to say or agree on anything. I'm just uh, addressing the controversy. And yeah, that's there. Okay, and like I said, the reprint cuts out the love taps. I think it keeps the same ending. Um, I don't know if that changes the context of the read itself. I have to read the reprint to really know. But if you have read the reprint, let me know down in the comment section, did this version change the context of the original? Let me let me know. Okay. And I don't find it a coincidence that I'm putting this at the third, the, I guess the third in the, in the top five here. Um, this is for a short story from uh, Still More Tales to Give You Goosebumps. A short story made it on the controversy list. And, it, and the story we're going to be, uh, I'm bringing up is called An Old Story. Uh, an old story, fun fact, an old story in Bride of the Living Dummy were put on a VHS together back in the 90s. I'm not kidding. The Bride of the Living Dummy and an old story were put on the same VHS. That happened. Was that a coincidence? Was that done on purpose? I don't know. Um, but this whole story it, and the themes and everything it has to offer is shrouded in controversy because uh let's just go over the plot and then i'll tell you why so these two boys are named tom and john are left home alone one weekend and their um supposed aunt dahlia that they've never met or don't remember meeting is supposed to come babysit them and when she arrives she um essentially makes these boys prune cookies and uh, the boys eat the prune cookies, and then they turn into old men. And then Aunt Dahlia reveals that she wants her bridge friends to essentially pay her to date and or marry the two boys who are like 12-year-olds turned to old men. And I don't really have to explain why that's controversial, because it is, but... Um, the point of the controversy really stems down to uh, that. And then by the end, the two boys do manage to outwit Aunt Dahlia and she, they actually kill her. Um, but what makes the story even more controversial and more morbid, at least the short story, is that when the parents get home, Aunt Dahlia is revealed not to be the real aunt. So she's essentially a stranger that's manipulated the parents. And when Tom goes to school the next day to talk to this girl that he likes, she's about to eat a prune cookie, implying that girls are also being targeted for this operation. And that also just uh, really leaves the story uh, on a WTF note. <laughs> so, you know, the episode, like I said, Bride of, I didn't talk about Bride of the Living Dummies episode or an old stories episode. They were included on the same VHS. I guess we'll talk about them both here. They both have this theme of, like, I guess they're going for this Valentine's theme and, like, dating and love. Um, in the episode for Bride, right, Slappy's more involved in the, the reveal twist of Mary Ellen is kind of tweaked. And it's implied heavy, heavier that Slappy's going after Jillian with the stealing the wedding ring and stuff that's added in there. Now, the twist is changed to where he invades Harrison instead, so really th that part of the equation is taken out from the book. Uh, but it's still kind of controversial in the episode. I argue that it's it's more in your face with the innuendos and the implications, but not as weird as the love tap stuff. Now, in the uh, episode for an old story, it's more so the same story, except like little mechanisms of how they get themselves out of being old people and uh the ending is different it's a little more ambiguous and a little less controversial to end on um and that's as far as i'll go with my opinions <laughs> so um and so essentially what what makes this story controversial is that of course it deals with child trafficking at the heart of it it's child trafficking it, people say it's bad taste people say it's bad people say it's not scary 
Um, some people on the inverse argument will say that it's disturbing and it kind of relates real fears about uh, kids and growing old and uh, growing up too fast and it's kind of like an exaggeration on that. You know, there's conflicting opinions and stuff and uh, the controversy essentially is around the child trafficking and, and it child trafficking bit being bad taste so that's why I'm including an old story all right um, I guess for this one I'll go back and pick up uh, my Harry's adventure because both of these also had episodes same thing with like piano lessons but I'm only going to talk about the episodes for the top five right so the the, the second one uh, I guess number two is going to be say cheese and die again now I'm going to hold up um, My Harry's Adventure real quick. So both of these episodes are considered some of the, by some to be some of the worst episodes in the show because they're bad taste and just bad, right? So like My Harry's Adventure, it still has like the same message of the book and like pretty much the same ending. The acting people say is bad and just, it makes it like a bad uh, version of the book some people argue that the episode's even worse some people argue that it's better i'm not here to pick a side um but my Harry's adventure is more so the same and the reason why i want to talk about say cheese and die in the same way is that the episode is more the same to the book as well um maybe minus a few details but essentially the story is controversial for some special reasons and kind of some familiar reasons we've already talked about so one thing about this book that's controversial is that it's a sequel book to a beloved classic 62 book called Say Cheese and Die. And in that book, the main character and the people involved went through this whole ordeal with this camera and this character named Spidey. Now, what could be considered controversial about that book is that the kids essentially used the camera to kill Spidey. Um, but in this book, for what makes it controversial is that uh, Greg, the main character from the previous one, has to do a paper and write about something that he went through during the summer. So he decides to write up the paper on the camera and he has to go back and get the camera um, to prove it to everyone that this thing actually uh, exists and everything happened. So what's controversial is that it completely go against, goes against all the events in the previous book and acts like they don't matter. The second thing that's controversial is that <laughs> the, the, the point of the story is essentially making a story out of the the saying the camera adds 10 pounds so the camera has different abilities in this book compared to the first book and uh the girl i think becomes skinny and greg ends up becoming obese and greg makes several comments about his weight and his gaining weight uh, garners laughs and humility from his peers and his class and he's essentially become ostracized for becoming essentially fat. If you watch the episode, there's an iconic scene, I guess meme scene, where the actor is screaming no in the mirror when he's looking and he has that bad like CGI of him being overweight. And uh, yeah, so what's controversial about this, if you haven't caught on yet, is that this book is fat shaming and making fat jokes and alienating some people who might read this book who happen to be overweight um, or more on the uh, bigger side. When I was a kid, I was definitely considered um, chubby and, you know, a little overweight. So from personal experience, um, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up like that. So without saying what I feel about the story, the argument is that people are offended like actually offended by what um, R.L. Stein said about this book. And uh, the, some people seem to agree with that and say it's justified that people are angry about this book. And then some people um, maybe take it at face value and see what it's trying to do and maybe still have fun with it. Uh, maybe some people just don't see the thing going on there. Or maybe some people, um, you know, I don't know the case. I'm not trying to make arguments here. But the point is, it's controversial because um, it offends some people who happen to be um, uh, overweight or, you know, bigger in size. And uh, this book uh, 
to them seems like it's mocking people like them. So that's why it's controversial. And the episode does the same thing. And it has um, some people say some questionable acting and bad effects and stuff like that. And the message is even more hammered because of the length. Uh, so And it even more awkward. So, yeah. That's what some people say. Some people don't mind it as much. But it's commonly considered one of the worst, if not the worst, episodes by a good majority of people. And this one's well-hated book in the community overall. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't even matter if you are... It doesn't, even, it doesn't appear to be an issue if you're offended or not. Some people just hate this book because they think on, on a fundamental basis it's just a bad sequel. So... Yeah, this book <laughs> gets hated a lot for many reasons, but I just want to talk about the controversy behind it. So, there's that. And then the final book that's controversial is one that I think people argue about if it's that controversial or not. Um, but I think this has become one of the most hated books in the community that I've noticed. Next is like Say Cheese and Die Again, My Harry's Adventure. Those are pretty hated ones. Um, Bride of the Blooming Dummy's not that hated, um, but people do like to criticize it, you know. And then, uh, an old story seems to be about mixed, the same, uh, mixed reactions. Some people really think it's quirky and cool, some people really hate it. But this one, I see majorly hate for. And some people might like it, but nobody gives this thing higher than a three. Um, and the book is Revenge R Us, okay. Now... I'm not going to try to say my personal opinions about this, but um, this book is controversial, I think, in, in today's lens. Um, and I, I think there was kind of a reawakening of what the what some consider to be the worst Goosebumps book. I've seen a lot of people put this as one of the worst and the top five worst. And the reason why, the, the controversy behind this book stems from the entire book just being bad taste. One hand, it's a revenge story, and revenge stories tend to get ugly and nonsensical and just mean-spirited so that's one thing going against it too the character wade is in a situation where she's in a family with a brother who's older and supposedly supposed to be m more mature but the brother does some really questionable things to some people some people uh, argue that the things that the brother does is absolutely disgusting and he's easily the worst character ever made in Goosebumps. Essentially, what this character does is that, uh, like, for example, takes the girl's underwear and, like, does stuff with it. And then takes pictures of her while she's sleeping without her consent. And he's just really mean and nasty to her throughout the whole story. He seems to have no remorse for things he does. And he seems to be a really big jerk. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. And what makes this book <laughs> um, really hated is um, by people, and by people scream that this book is probably the most controversial one, is that by the end, uh, the main character, Wade, um, doesn't come out on top. And it's a lot of people argue that it's forced. A lot of people argue that it's just really unnecessarily mean to Wade to end the book that way. Uh, the ending's just absolutely awful. Um, the all the characters suck because of the ending. You know, there's so many arguments that come out of this book. Uh, and then on the opposing side, people tend to kind of view this as a better version of Be Careful What You Wish For. People seem, tend to look at Be Careful What You Wish For in a worse light than this for some reason. Or in some way. And, um, yeah, people tend to argue about this. If this is, if this is worse and Be Careful What You Wish For, or is this better? That's really the main argument I hear. Um, but yeah, the controversy around this one really stems around the behavior of the older brother named Micah. And uh, what happens to Wade, the protagonist, who basically gets crapped on the whole book. You know, the controversy in the lens of people who view it controversial, at least. Think that Wade gets crapped on and has a really, un really bad, undeserving ending for her. So... Yeah, and some people might get a kick out of it, I guess, if you're looking at it. I've heard people say they get a kick out of it, kick out of it because it feels unusual for the series. And uh, some people might get a kick out of the uh, uh, occasional mean-spirited book. To each their own, right? I'm not trying to pick a side here. I'm just saying why it's controversial. So, 
yeah, obviously there's some uh, perverted overtones with Micah to make it kind of controversial for some and put it in that bad taste category that you quite can't stomach, you know? So yeah, that's essentially all the controversial goosebumps I'll be talking about in this video. Um, let me know down in the comment section. Here's all the books. Uh, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, am I missing a book that's controversial to you? What book would you add to the conversation about being controversial? Do you agree with any of the points I brought up in this video about the books being controversial or the stories being controversial? Uh, are there specific scenes out in certain books that you find controversial? Are there broader controversial themes that go throughout all of the Goosebumps books that you see? Let me know. This is this is just a pure discussion video. Please just remember, um, if you like these books, that's perfectly fine. I quite like a few myself. We're just talking about the controversy, and we'll just leave it at that. Remember, keep it respectful if you put some comments down in the comment section. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.